This is Brad Seaman with Keller Williams at the Seaman team. Um, we are so fortunate today to have Casey O'Connell, uh, an estate planning attorney with us uh, to discuss a little bit about my personal estate, but also talk about some different pitfalls and things that you might run into if you don't have an estate plan in place, especially when you own real estate. So a little bit about Casey. He's a rising star in Super Lawyer Magazine. Uh, he was nominated by them as a rising star, and um, you know he's here today with us. We consider him a great friend and a business partner in a lot of different ways, and uh, we wanted to introduce you. Thanks for coming on today, uh, Casey. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate you having me, and uh, hopefully I can shed some light on some of the misconceptions and uh, also pitfalls of estate planning and failing to plan properly. All right. So I've already failed once. I don't have a, a plan in place. So Casey, we've been talking a little bit about the fact that I have three children, I have equity in my home, and you know what? Realistically, I, I need to put something in place to protect my assets, uh, as well as protect my children from any problems in the future. So let's talk a little bit about that. What, what can you recommend for everyone who owns real estate with some equity uh, to, to put in place? Right. So uh, one big thing for people to understand is that if you own property in California, residential, commercial, uh, rental properties, how, whatever your uh, portfolio is comprised of, even owning one residence is going to put you at an, a risk of being exposed to probate. So avoiding probate court is a major goal of what estate planners do, and that's why trusts are created for that purpose. Um, another thing that people need to understand is that uh, the probate court eligibility, so to speak, if you're subject to probate, is based on the gross value of your property. So it's not based on merely equity. If you have a mortgage or two against the property, um, probate court looks at the gross value um, of the fair market value of your property at the date of your death to determine whether your estate must be probated. So that would put most Californians, if not all Californians who own real property at a risk of probate exposure. So that's why trusts have been become so uh, predominant in California uh, for those people that do own real estate and have other assets in addition to that. And thanks, Casey. And, and you were telling me a little bit about the fees that are associated based on this gross amount. I was blown away. Yeah. I really didn't understand that the gross amount, you said 6%. That On average, it, it, it is about 6% of the gross value of your estate to go through a probate proceeding. And it also takes, in San Diego County, uh, on average, 15 to 16 months to get through the proceeding. Why does it so take so it, long? Well, that's a great question. Uh, there's only two probate court judges for the entire county of San Diego. So that's one of the biggest uh, holdups. Also, the courts are extremely backed up with budget shortfalls, um, furlough days, and, and uh, fewer and fewer staff to go through all the paperwork. It just takes forever. So the great thing about planning your estate, and especially planning your estate with a trust, is you avoid that probate court entirely. Uh, you come see a, an estate planning attorney or a trust administration attorney at the death of the first or both spouses, and it takes merely weeks to administer a trust as opposed to a year and a half where you might have children or other beneficiaries waiting on distributions from your estate uh, with uh, the court holding it up and then the court having the authority to direct where those distributions go. That's scary. So, That's definitely yeah. really, really scary. Now, I'm guilty, guilty as charged, um, right. at procrastinating. So we've been talking about this forever. And, you know, I've set an appointment with you for next week to come in and actually finalize things up and make sure we get it in play. Um, but right. you know, if it's, it's so hard for people to think in terms of um, uh, why do I need to do this? What are the reasons why I would do this now as opposed to later? And we all procrastinate on things like this because it's facing our own mortality in, in certain respects. What are, right. and what, what are some of the different ways that, you know, what might happen if I don't do this in a timely fashion? Well, yeah, uh, there's a misconception that when you go to meet with an estate planner, you're, you're sitting down across from the Grim Reaper, um, that we're there to plan your death. And as I guess that is true in a way, but I'd like to think of it, and I try and get my clients to think of it as family planning. You're planning for the care of your family after you can no longer do so. And it also allows you to control certain assets and distributions after you've passed away. So um, by using what we call protective inheritance trust provisions to protect beneficiaries' inheritance from their creditors, their spouses, um, business failings, things of that nature, um, and also nominating guardians for minor children. For your instance, Brad, um, with your three minors, if something were to happen to you and Lauren, uh, I, without a nomination there, it's up to the court to decide who's going to raise your children. That's a very scary thought for most people, and they'd like to have the choice of who would raise their kids, and that's all something that's included in a state plan at our firm. But 
to get back to why someone should do it now, um, I think it's important for them to understand that while an estate plan um, isn't something that a lot of younger millennials or 30, 40 year olds even think about, it's something that they certainly should contemplate, um, especially as property owners or uh, individuals with children, because the documents can grow with you. They are revocable, amendable. If uh, circumstances change in the future, if you acquire assets in the future, all of that can be addressed through amendments and different work. So I like to say, set up your estate plan now and let it grow with your family. Um, in the unfortunate event that something were to happen to you, you have the peace of mind knowing that you've planned this out, you've taken care of your family uh, if you can no longer be there to do so. So that's uh, the biggest motivating factor for our clients. Uh, another thing is that uh, there are certain trusts and techniques that can be used for individuals to maximize and minimize other uh, tax effects other than just federal estate taxes. Um, the federal estate tax exemption currently is at $5.45 million per person or $10.9 million for a married couple. Now, 99% of Americans don't have that much money, but that doesn't mean you don't need to plan your estate because there's still other considerations such as property taxes, capital gains taxes, and uh, healthcare, catastrophic healthcare coverage that should be addressed in your estate planning documents, all of which is included with our plans here at my firm. Okay. Gotcha. Now we talk about procrastination and, and I keep thinking about it and we, we go back to that mortality thing. And I know it's possible that if I keep putting this off, there's a, there's a rare chance that something might happen to me or God forbid right. something that happened to my wife or both of us. And so I think it's super important to get, get this done now as to continuing to put it off. What it could cost in the future is far greater than what, what it cost me today. Exactly. Exactly. So we hear a lot of pushback from some clients on the cost of it upfront to do the estate plan. Um, and I implore or encourage them to uh, realize that it could cost them tens of thousands of dollars more through a probate proceeding. And also you lose the ability to control your assets, to protect assets for beneficiaries uh, and surviving spouses. And if you have, for instance, blended family issues, like uh, you have children from a previous marriage that you want to benefit and make sure that your surviving spouse does not disinherit them after you're gone. There's ways to achieve that through trust. Um, and procrastination, as you mentioned, is the cancer of estate planning. It really is. Um, just recently, we had a potential client at my firm who had been in my ear about wanting to get in here. He's been busy, couldn't get to it, couldn't get to it, and unfortunately and unexpectedly passed away uh, without any estate planning documents in place. So now his wife is exposed to the whole probate proceeding, um, figuring out how to transfer title to uh, her name only through the courts, leaving that up to the judge to rule on that and it's going to take forever to do so those same pitfalls that i mentioned before come into play with a failure to plan and um, not to mention the other tax considerations and uh, control of your assets that you achieve through setting up your estate plan gotcha yeah it's it, it's really i mean just talking to you in the in the moments that we have it's really lit a fire under me to start taking action as opposed to postponing because anything can happen and i I, I feel bad leaving my family in a position that's, you know, that, that they don't have any control over. That's the worst part. Exactly. And that's what I try and encourage my clients to, to think of it as family planning. It's not, oh, I'm not going to be here. I'm, I'm planning my death. It's I'm doing this for you. Uh, so it's in place and everything's taken care of. And you can stay out of the courts. You can stay out of, uh, uh, you can avoid any property tax reassessments that made a hap might happen. You can put restrictions on distributions of assets for troubled beneficiaries or make them contingent upon incentives. And there's a lot of different creative ways you can plan your estate um, to encourage uh, your children and grandchildren to grow with your family and to uh, hopefully they're protected through what you've chosen to include in your trust. And what I love, Casey, you're passionate about it. And it's you're talking about family planning, not death planning. It's a big difference. And so, right. you know, I really appreciate you kind of giving us a, a couple cents on, on what's going on in the estate planning world. Um, you know, we know it's important for our clients who have bought properties uh, to make sure that they have an estate plan in place for the future, right? No matter what they're planning on doing with the property, it's really, really important for them to do it. So thank you so much for coming on today, Casey. I know you've got a great valuable resource and a website. It's www.familytrustplanner.com. And, right. um, you know, if you need some more information, you can reach out to Casey and, and uh, get his information and, and he'd be happy to help you. So thanks so much for coming on today, Casey. Appreciate having me, Brad. And uh, if there's anything I can offer to your clients in the future, let me know. And I'd be happy to uh, shed some light on any questions or misconceptions they may have. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Right. You too.